Hip Hop Homicides premieres Thursday, November 3rd on WE TV. Stream every moment Mondays on All Black. Hello, you two. Uh, my name is Najir, Chambers of Big Gold Belt Media Van. And Mona, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. Pleasure to talk to you, my brother. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, I'm very um, humbled to have this opportunity to talk about your new show, Hip Hop Homicide. But, um, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't start off this interview, uh, which in unfortunate news uh, with the passing of Takeoff this morning, um, just really just really hits home, especially preparation for this and the, the, the honor to talk to you two. And, you know, this type of news just lands right on our footsteps. Um, and I would love um, if, if we can have a second because, you know, you two are icons and and and, and figures within the culture and the community uh, with sort of your your message and emotions about the events this morning. I mean, it's it's rough, you know, especially in light of the times that we're living in and and the fact that, you know, this show speaks to this very, you know, epidemic that we're experiencing in real time today. Of course, you know, our condolences go out to the family, the friends, the fans. It's heartbreaking. Um, it's it's just really hard to experience this on the frequency that we seem to find ourselves in lately. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, when we were making Hip Hop Homicides, that we were making a show to uh, be enthralling to a lot of people. But I think that as we made it, we we saw that the show was in, incredibly needed in order to diagnose some of the cultural ills that that uh, seem to be befalling our communities at all times. And, you know, to wake up this morning and and see that news, what I thought about was the eight mothers that I sat down with, the families, the children, uh, the community members, everyone who never feels whole again after they lose a loved one. I thought about Quavo. I thought about um, Offset. I thought about, you know, Cardi. I thought about Little Culture. I thought about everyone who is really close to, to take off and how, whereas everybody else is mourning, they have something in their lives that they lost something in their lives that they can never replace. And that hit home while we were doing this show. And I hope that it hits home for everyone else so that we can have some really difficult conversations about what needs to be done about this problem. Absolutely. Thank you to you two for the words there. Um, Again, be remiss if we didn't start off uh, by um, acknowledging that, Um, you know, going into the series and I'm very excited uh, knowing that was coming down the pipeline and, and, and content this year. Um, you, you know, my, my first question and, uh, you know, I've checked out the first episode um, and I, and I kind of want to know you two signing on for a project as such. What was sort of your 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 means and in, in maybe even feels of responsibilities to the fans in doing this show? Because, yeah, there's an investigative aspect to it, but also uh, and as you already sort of mentioned already. There's also an educational side to this as well. So I was just wondering what sort of that responsibility that you took into uh, the production of this show? I mean, for me in particular, and, you know, I know in all the conversations with 50 and Van, it was very important that we handled this material with respect and sensitively, especially as Van just said, because we're talking about people. A lot of, you know, folks out there see them as icons, as superstars, as, you know, their stage names and forget that behind that, these are sons and fathers and brothers. And we wanted to tell the whole picture. We wanted to go back and speak to the family members members and learn things about these people that we didn't know and to see them in a much different light and hopefully to shed some light on, you know, the circumstances that led to, unfortunately, their demise so that, you know, some parts it's a cautionary tale, other parts it's instructive for, you know, fans and and family members who wanted their memories to be remembered in a certain way. So, you know, we approached it with all of those things in mind so that, you know, we could not only be informative and maybe, you know, get some answers, but also, you know, do a a bit of a tribute to the lives that they led far above and beyond who they were as stars and music artists. Yeah. I think that for me, um, going forward in the show, I was, it was a, it was a subject that I was interested in. It was something that I was like, okay, well, if we're going to talk about this, uh, how do we discuss it in a way that resonates with people and 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 talks about the families? The show to me is more about the families. It's more about 
the people around these artists who are just left with no answers. They're left with no answers. And why don't they get answers? Do they get answers because of the omerta that exists in our neighborhoods that stops us from cooperating with with you know law enforcement which you know there's a lot of reasons why we don't trust law enforcement so is that stopping these families from getting answers or is there something else is there something else is do people care that fbg duck was killed do people care beyond the fact that he's a rapper that xxx and tassion was killed do people care that mo3 was killed do we do they really care i think when you talk to the families and when you sit down and you ask these questions there's a business as usual aspect to a lot of these, these murders, to a lot of these killings that I just don't think that people are, are aware is, is happening. I don't think that people are aware that a lot of times when you look at this dysfunction, people are just throwing up their hands. And meanwhile, these families have to kind of uh, put the pieces back together. And there's some things that I didn't know, last thing I'll say, about hip hop homicides until we started shooting the show. Mm. And when we, when we started shooting the show, the stories of the lives of these people became paramount, mm-hmm. more paramount than a lot of the investigations, like who they actually were, what they actually meant, who wasn't responsible for yeah. like what happened to them. And I, I credit Mona, I credit 50, I credit Vanessa for always putting people first in this production. And mm-hmm. people are going to see that when they watch the show. A lot of good tidbits there, and um, and, and something even Mona said earlier. I mean, the, the 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 frequency of these things not even giving us time to grieve from the previous one, and we're already mm-hmm. to the next, and 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 yeah. So we kind of got conditioned to the point of just saying, "Hey, we lost the, we lost somebody in our community," and then that's just it. Yeah, you know what, what's what's the responsibility? What's what's the due diligence here? And I and I and I absolutely see that um in your work and 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 obviously yours as well too, Mona. Um. Mm-hmm. In in the first episode, uh, and, and and let me be uh, precise here, Mona. You know, anytime your name is attached to a show, that holds a lot of weight here. And and then in the and in the first episode, we got fifty, and fifty spoke about, uh, you know, what really drove him to want to be a part of this. You know, we talked about his connection, his relationship uh, to pop, and you know, a lot of people can see that on the surface level. But what I loved about it is that, like, we we saw like a very person to person aspect of fifty. You know, a nod and why this meant something to him. Um, my two questions to you is one, what, what was sort of your driving factor that you wanted to be a part of this? You wanted to have your name attached to this, but also will we will we see you in this episode in this season to any capacity? Uh no, I am strictly behind the scenes on this <laughs> one. And 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 I will say, you know, this has been a passion project for 50 for Curtis. You know, he was a thousand percent present throughout the entire process. You know, it came out of a meeting that we had when he was talking about the kinds of projects that needed to be done for the culture, for the community. Um, So this has been a labor of love for everyone involved. You know, our field team, P. Frank, Russell, Vanessa, Satin, you know, editor-in-chief of Triple XL was such an instrumental part of the stories. Nikki, who was our researcher, everyone gave a thousand percent and having, you know, Van at the helm of this, we couldn't have had a better person because there was a personal connection and and a personal empathy that Van brought to, you know, the discussions, the storytelling, everything about it. But, you know, for me, this was just um, a, a small contribution to keeping these legacies alive, to making sure that, you know, we are not so completely desensitized that these folks are just yet another headline. And, you know, giving um, these families an opportunity to share elements, you know, of their loved ones that we may not have heard anywhere else. We definitely kept the families and the friends front and center throughout the storytelling. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Van, my brother. Um, yeah, you know, much like Mona said, you're in the trenches here. You know, you, as the host of this show, you're you're in the field, you're doing the work, um, and that's a huge, huge uh, not only responsibility, but at times that can bear a lot of weight uh, mm-hmm. and, and to your physicality, your mental health, everything. Uh, what's sort of your process stepping away from the investigative aspect from it? What, what do you do to kind of you know re- re- rekindle your kin? You, I mean, you're here, you're doing investigation, you're, you're learning new things, as you said. Um, and, and at the same time, too, you're you're being a vessel uh, to say and kind of being body removed, maybe spirit ahead, but body removed to do this job. What, what are you doing to kind of bring it all back together once, you know, the, the work for the day is done? 
Uh, good question. So every single person that Mona just mentioned was integral in that. Every single person. I don't know how they were able to assemble a crew that became like a family like this. At the end of the shoot, we was getting mad over. We was we were so tethered together. I remember, shout out to Dinell. I remember I went to get everybody ice cream because I would do little stuff like that for the crew. <laughs> Like they wake up in the morning, I go to a bodega, get everybody a, like a, a bacon, egg, and cheese, right? Yeah. Like the crew would be there. I would go get everybody ice cream. We was in Florida. I didn't get Donnell some ice cream one time. Mm-hmm. And she was so mad. She was mad like she was my sister for real. She was like, everything? <laughs> and I'm like, and so I had to get her a whole thing of ice cream just for herself. And that seems trivial, right? But we were so comfortable talking <laughs> with each other communicating with each other by the end of it that we were really able to kind of get some of our uh our emotions off of our chest through the relationships that we had right through the fact that we were chilling through the fact that we were in some tough places Mm -hmm. to shoot we were not doing this from behind a computer screen sitting in la everywhere where this is going on we were there yeah And so we had each other. It was a great shoot with an amazingly talented people, you know. Um, And so I I think that for me, I always felt filled up after a day of shooting because everybody had my back to such a degree. And P. Frank, Russell, Donnell, Shelby, Kamar, everybody had my back. It was everyone trying to make sure I had what it was that I needed. You know, and then when we was down in New Orleans, man, I had my mama and people with me. I was flying people in, baby. I had to <laughs> right? you know what I mean? but, but and, you- and you probably didn't even know this, Van, but we had check-ins about you. It was like, how's Van holding up out there? Because, you know, yeah. you were still across from these moms and, you know, absorbing their energy and feeling their pain and, you know, handling it so sensitively. So we'd be checking in like, how's he holding up out there, you know? But yeah, I felt that. I felt really supported and really loved the entire time we were doing the show. So, um, you know, man, we was black people looking out for one another. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love to hear it. Love to hear it. You know, the one thing about um, television is, is you know, obviously you got to play in these confines of how much time you're going to have. And editing is, is a very, very uh, stingy job. Um, I'd be curious to know about how much additional footage uh, do you all have? And was there ever another uh, icon, celebrity, uh, or rapper um, that did not make the cut for season one? Uh, was there anybody that y'all really wanted to get in there, but it just wasn't going to work out with the constraints? You know, what I'll say about that is the sh- the the saddest part of it is how many rappers we lost during the course of production, right? We tried to be very um, strategic about, you know, showing a wide sampling in the first season. We didn't want it to just be about, you know, the stories that made the headlines, the ones that everyone knows about, because it was really, you know, about drilling down on the fact that all of these lives were important. And so we go all the way back to, you know, Magnolia Shorty and we, you know, wanted to have um, an opportunity to tell stories in the different regions because we tell these stories from a very holistic standpoint of, you know, the community that they come from, the environment, you know, what's happening locally with hip hop in that community, how all of these factors may have factored in. Um, So, you know, no, we didn't go like, oh, we wish we could squeeze this story in. We wish we didn't have to tell these stories at all. I hear that. You know, but um, we we chose these eight stories that were the first season. And again, you know, it was mind boggling to us every time there was another death during the period, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I believe the beginning of episode one does state that, you know, the 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 number of murders since 2020 and i'm like well you know <laughs> the two years in the pandemic or the moment you thought everybody would just kind of be focused on their mental health kind of taking a step back from the world and didn't slow up anything within our community which is a really sad thing um, um uh, mona is it is it safe to say uh that we can be looking for i know we're just getting started in season one but are, uh, can we expect and can we be looking forward to a possible season two here you know that's such a hard question to answer without 
seeming insensitive to, right. you know, the subject matter that we're talking about. Um, like we said, it wasn't about just tapping into what was happening right now. It was about shining a light on, on this across the board. So yeah. there are so many, you know, um, unfortunate deaths that have happened over the course of all of these years that, you know, unfortunately there are more than enough stories to tell. We hope that, you know, when people watch the series that their takeaway is, you know, in honor of the yeah. lives that were lived, that, um, people, the families come away from this. I, I know speaking to Triple um, X's mom and, and her reaction to having watched his episode, you know, really touched me because that was the heart of what we were trying to convey. And so we hope that, you know, people watch those stories, come away from it feeling like they've gotten something, you know, from it. And, and maybe if they want to see more of those stories, sure. We'll be here and ready to tell those stories, but it's certainly, you know, not something that we hope continues to fulfill itself by way of having more of these, you know, terrible um, tragedies happen in our culture. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'd like, I, I like to add this. Uh, I'd like to add that also within all of these stories are people who are working on solutions. Mm -hmm. So we met with Pastor Corey Brooks in in Chicago. You know, we met with <clears throat> Inglewood Barbie in Chicago. We talked to Mama Duck, who's 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 doing her best to try to work on those issues. Everywhere we were, we went down to 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 uh to to Queens and experienced Chinks Day. I can't wait till you guys see that in the Chinks episode. How the memory and the legacy of Chinks is being kept alive every single year by his friends and family, how there are people that are, 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 are holding on to the, the, the great memories of their loved ones and how people are working every single day to change these, to change these situations and these outcomes. So to me, a part of the show is definitely investigating these, uh, these, these incidents, but it's also about talking about some of the people that are in all of these places that are really putting their lives and their livelihood on the line to help mm. people. And we did not go one spot. We didn't go one place without introducing you to somebody who you can feel a little bit hopeful to. Mm -hmm. So if the show um, or, or about, so if the show does uh, continue, I would hope that there's also a part of it that people will be able to say, Hey, we're not alone in trying to change these outcomes and trying to change these situations. There are people that we can support and we can learn about them by watching the show that are working on this issue and working on this problem. So um, there was a silver lining. I think there's an element of, Van, what you take away from the show as well. We have, you know, a recap that we do with Van and Envy, and that conversation is all about what can we learn from this situation? Absolutely. What can yeah. we take away from here? Because a big part of, you know, what we're trying to do, too, is impart information. And yeah. there's an entire community out there of young rappers up and coming who don't necessarily have, you know, the folks that are um, talking to them about some of the pitfalls, about some of the things that they need to be mindful of and cognizant of. And we hope that there's that element there as well of information and, you know, takeaway that hopefully helps prevent some of these situations from reoccurring. Absolutely well said. And, and that was a little bit of what I was going to say earlier. Not only is it an educational factor for us, the fans and just the viewers, but it does seem like an educational factor for the next inspiring or the one who, you know, has, who has made it, who hasn't had that guidance or, and, and, or figure around there to kind of explain to them the, the, the dynamics of the world out here. So um, that's, that's really beautiful to hear. Uh, you know, thank you, you two, uh, for the chance to talk to you today. Um, I really cannot wait to check out episode two and um, you know, we'll, 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 obviously put the energy out there and hopefully we can get a season two uh, uh, somewhere down the line. It's not because we're glorifying these things, but it's because these, this type of message, these type of messages and this education does need to get out there one way or another and the highlight and the uh, celebration and, and the honor of these folks that they're not just for, forgotten, but that they're still being celebrated within their community and all over the world. So Amen. until then, until then hip hop homicides, folks, you can check that out. Now, this is Mona Scott. This is Van Lathan. I appreciate you all appreciate you all so much. And hopefully we get to talk again soon.
All right, brother. Thank you. Can we do that ending? It's Mona Scott Young. Mona Scott Young, excuse me. <laughs> the legend, excuse me, the queen of Mona Scott Young and Van Lathan, folks. There we go. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye. Peace. Bye,